Welcome to Glioblastoma Strategies and Tactics with Eric Dysinger. Hi everyone and welcome back. So this next video what I'm going to talk about I think is very important and it's about conceptualizing how the disease works. Um, you need to form a plan visualize conceptualize how the disease works before you can employ uh, a, a development process to attack the disease and to verify the results so what i did initially was look at how does glioblastoma work okay so i, I use a comparison if a child rides their bicycle falls off and bumps their head, what happens? There's damage to the area. The body or the damaged area cells signal to the body, we have a problem, send the troops. So the body sends automatically leukocytes, neutrophils, cytokines to the area to try to heal the situation. And the area of damage flames up, inflammation occurs to a certain point and then the area is healed and then the cells say okay stop sending the troops we're fine you know continue about your business and then over the course of time the bump swells down and the child goes about their normal business of riding a bicycle probably with a helmet this time so glioblastoma I conceptualize worked in a similar fashion just inside the body you have a corruption of cells. The cells send feedback to the body. Alert, alert, we're being attacked. Uh, send the troops to come and fight this battle. But the problem is, the troops aren't winning the battle against the glioblastoma cells. It's a losing battle. So this inflammation's occurring. More and more troops are being sent but the inflammation's increasing, the tumor is increasing, and it's a losing battle, and it gets into what we call a runaway condition. And the tumor swells up until the brain can't handle it anymore, and the patient can't survive anymore. So we have conditions like this in my field, um, the fuel system on a car, for example. If part of that fuel system fails, all the systems that are trying to control the fuel pressure to that engine try to compensate, but the engine will never get back to running the way that it was supposed to, okay? So there's the relationship that I'm going on to conceptualize this disease. Now, the next question is, in my example, on the vehicle, how do I bring that fuel system back into control? Well, of course, I could shut down the engine, but for a glioblastoma patient, shutting down the engine is what we're trying to avoid. Um, the other thing is you can lock out the automatic system, put it into manual override, and this is all parts of the system. And I'll stress all parts of the system need to be put into a manual override and the system will stabilize. It might not be where you want, but you can manually control it to get to where you want to get the car to the dealership, to home, wherever you want to take it to get repaired. So this is my hypothesis at this point. You need to figure out to control this disease in a chronic condition, which is my goal, not just slow it down. I don't think there's a cure. But if you can control it in a chronic condition, much like HIV is controlled, you're taking medications to prevent it from being full-blown AIDS. Uh, you should be able to, uh, glioblastoma, you should be able to control it and hopefully have a long-term survival. So with this hypothesis, I started looking for studies, uh, clinical trials, anything that seemed to match this methodology. And at this time of my treatment, I had believed um, the neurosurgeon had resected 100% of my tumor, and I was okay, but 
there was in all likeliness the event of a recurrence going to happen. Um, so I continued researching and then I found uh, a study in Germany uh, that was called the CUSP-9 protocol. And what was interesting, what caught my attention about this, their methodology, they attributed the survival of glioma to a delta of a, from a river into an ocean. And they showed a picture of a delta with all the different pathways coming from the river and feeding out into the ocean. And their methodology was if you block one of those pathways, the water's still going to flow down the other pathways. Okay, this matches my methodology so far. So then they did a study in Petri dishes. And... I remember this, this really grabbed my attention. There was three Petri dishes. They had control of cancer cells in a Petri dish. Those with cells treated with TMZ, and then another Petri dish of cells treated with the CUSP-9 protocol. Now, the control, they had normal cancer cells as you would expect. The TMZ had a little bit less cancer cells, but cells were there nonetheless. The cusp 9 the cells were gone. This was a clean dish. Now, I, I wouldn't say you, I would eat out of that dish, but it was pretty clean. And this astounded me. This had a similar methodology I was looking for, and look at these results. Now, they also did... A, a study on human patients. They took 10 patients, which I know is not a lot. It's not much. They prescribed the CUSP-9 protocol to these patients. Now, remember, this is for recurrent glioblastoma. So these patients already had a recurrence, which is a very bad situation to be in. And this study was done 2013, 2014, a time frame about that. And at the time of the results that I saw were posted, I believe it was 2019, half of the patients were still alive. That's a 50% efficacy. And I'm like, okay, this is the what I want to go to. So the study gave the nine pathway or the the pathways that were impacted by the nine drugs. I had that information. They gave instructions how to ramp into the protocol and what dosages to use and how many times a day you had to take them. I have, you know, I had everything I needed and my goal was to present it to my doctor and I talked to him. I said, "Listen, if I ever get to the point where I have a recurrence from this disease, would you be willing to prescribe these nine medications for me so that I can fight this disease? Because I think this is the way to go. And him and other doctors said, no, it's not an approved treatment. We can't do that. And I, I understand that because there could be side effects that I may experience that are not encompassed in the 10 patients that they tested. And um, so I like this methodology. So I had to think about what other avenues I had. I could do it, try to do it based on diet, but there's not much research based on diet. Very little, if all. So that, that was kind of an unknown. Well, there was supplements, which was kind of another unknown. There was a lot of people that say they work, they didn't work. Um, uh, but most importantly, there was actual research peer-reviewed research done on supplements. So I had all the pathways and I started looking at popular supplements. Unfortunately, supplement studies don't really always identify what pathways are targeted. And so I kind of hit a wall trying to do this. But I really believe that this was a methodology. I had these pathways. I kept them uh, in my Excel sheet for later purposes. Maybe I'd find an answer later on. Okay. 
So, um, after some more time and some more research, trying to find something similar, I was over in Chinese medicine, and they had an herbology study where they had a preparation of five teas, uh, drinkable teas, and you had to drink these teas seven or eight times a day, and uh, their goal was uh, to attack glioblastoma from many different avenues. And what was interesting about this study, they explained their attack, and they identified the survival systems of glioblastoma, not pathways, systems. So I view the systems as New York City, and all the pathways are the street systems, or subway systems, whatever you want to choose. Uh, the pathways are the street systems for communication and, uh, you know, sending of information back and forth. So, this study identified systems such as angiogenesis, apoptosis, inflammation, chemoresistance, or, and um, metastasis. So I started thinking about it. Well, if New York is inflammation, does that make Chicago metastasis, Atlanta apoptosis? Interesting. And what, what, what also struck me about this is that I remember in studies, these terms were referenced. So what I did, I took all of these out of Chinese medicine and I looked, oh, India medicine also uses these terms and the U.S. medical industry is using them. So these are known survival systems. I don't know if they're industry standard, but three different countries' medical systems are referencing them. So I went back to a curcumin study. Sure enough, inflammation is indicated in there, as well as apoptosis. So I'm like, okay. I took all these systems, put them in my Excel spreadsheet as column headings, and I went to different protocols that people had posted that they're taking. And I started researching all these protocols and supplements. Some drugs are involved in there too. And after about 20 supplements slash drugs, I had seen that my matrix was populated. All of the systems were accounted for. So then I went through and took drugs uh, I used some in my initial protocol that attacked multiple targets, which uh, supplements seem to do. And I filled out my own grid. I, I put some redundancies in there. I just didn't do, okay, apoptosis. I have one from curcumin. Go from there. There was definitely some overlap, and I used the strategy. Okay, well, maybe these things communicate on more street pass pathways than what the systems are accounting for. So I put some redundancies. I used at least four redundancies for each system based on the selection of supplements I chose. And that seemed to work. And so I had my initial protocol blocking all these systems. And so I go back and reflect. This fits my conceptualization on how the disease works. You have to put it into manual control. It has been spelled out both in pathways and system, all the survival that glioblastoma can do. And I was hoping that all these supplements would put glioblastoma into an override so I can control it as a chronic condition. But before I proceeded with this, I had to quantify this. As an engineer, prove it to yourself first before you move forward. And I had to think about this before, you know, this was a lot of supplements. I think there was 20, 21 supplements that I was starting with. And 
there was a cost associated with this. This was a couple hundred dollar investment <laughs> in supplements. So I wanted to make sure that this really looked good on paper and I had checked every box. So um, how I conceptualized uh, a way to quantify that this would work, I'll talk about in the next video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching Glioblastoma Strategies and Tactics.